my self sri rakshaka from ec third year from our team b up and i'm here to share a solution on programming of microcontroller wireless how we can program our microcontroller wireless yes we are here with our solution step 1 to download and upload grbl software type grbl firmware in google and click enter Select the first link on the shown page. In code, click on Download Zip. Once the zip is downloaded, go to the Downloads page and click Show in Folder. Then right-click on Zip file and select Extract here. Now the files are extracted. Now to open Arduino IDE, go to the sketch. In include library and click on add zip library. Find the extracted file in GRBL master. Select GRBL and click on open. Next, go to file in examples. Search for GRBL. In GRBL, select GRBL upload. Compile it in GRBL firmware. After done compiling, connect Arduino. In tools, select the port COM4 and board, and finally upload it. Once the uploading is done, move to the step two, which is after installing the firmware in our Arduino. This is the USB UART IC 80 Mega 8U2 or 80 Mega 16U2. Found out the Arduino UDO board is behind the USB connector and above the crystal. The small SMD chip provides the USB functionality to the Arduino UDO board. When the firmware is on, this IC is corrupted. Even if you connect the USB wire to the PC, there will be no response. The LED may light up, but there will be no response inside the device manager. If you open up the device manager and plug in the USB wire, there will be no response. To upgrade the firmware, we have to collect first the hex file, which is the firmware itself, and flip software from Atmel. either we will be using ngross to create the public url because we will have to use some tunneling to make our local server public let's create a new python project first thing we want to do inside this open up the terminal because we need to pip install flask and as the import and once we have done that we can go ahead and call pip install pyngrog and this will allow us to use ngrok with our terminal in our python project and once we have done that we can go ahead and close the terminal and delete all of these sample text and first thing we have to do is import from flask everything then we are going to import json and time then we have to create the flask app just going to be flask and the project name and right after that we can get started with creating our first endpoint to do this we have to call at app.root 
and then inside here we need to specify what the endpoint will be so for endpoint we just have it as an empty endpoint which will be using the get method so we are just going to type in methods equal and then we create we have to insert get and this is an annotation that we have to use on a function so we have to go ahead by creating a function which i will call a home page and to return our text as a json we should create a data set with all the data we want to return like a page and a value home and also a message that is going to be successfully loaded the home page and finally let us create a timestamp that is going to equal time time and this method will give us the current time as a timestamp under that we want to create a json dump which will turn the status set into json that is equal to json dumps of a data set then just we have to go ahead and return this json dump when this endpoint is called so every time the json dump is called it will create this and give as the exact time and it will return it to us as a json file now let's make something bit more custom so just copy and paste right under this first thing we are going to change here is the endpoint which we want to change to a request and make readable to yourself and we should change this page to a request page for the second function we will want the user to be able to input something to the query and be able to retrieve that we have to create a new variable just going to call this one user underscore query and that's going to be equal to the string of the request which will request an argument the input endpoint is now going to be flash user slash question mark user and equals then you can type username inside here then we have to go ahead and edit this data set so inside here to type in request instead of home and then we are going to write successfully got the request for and then we need to create a formatted string so we are going to add these curly brackets and add an if in front of the string and inside here we will insert the user query then just going to return the json temp as earlier expect this time once the user enters a user in a query it's going to return a json file with that value inside the json then we are just going to go down and we are going to call if name is main then we want to run our app i'm just going to specify ports if you don't specify port i believe it's going to default to 5000 but i like to pick my own port so i am just going to pick 777 if it doesn't work it's probably port has been taken so try 776 or 775 and yeah that's actually all we need to do for python 5 so now if you're going ahead you will see that we will have a local server that's running and if we click on that it's going to open in our json file that we have specified and let's zoom in a bit so as you can see we have the home page it shows successfully loaded the home page and timestamp if you refresh the timestamp timestamp will updates and show you the endpoint bugs we will add the slash user marks user equals user name it provides a query that allows us to insert this in, into the json so now the page is on the request page and it says successfully got the request for user name which means you can insert any value you want have it processed for python and then your application now let me show how to host this on a public server right now if you can run this on a device that are connected to your local network but now let's go to a in proc and when you create a profile you will have this page so as you can see right here set up an installation and inside here you will have something that tells you to unzip and install there will be a option to connect to your account but we just need to copy this part which is going to say auth token so copy that without the dots or slash and go to your terminal page then just you want to paste it and it's going to say downloading ingrock which might take a minute the point that it is done has finished downloading it will say auth token save the configuration is somewhere in the configuration files so the next thing we need to copy is this line 
write http without the slash and paste it in there and just need to report the correct port you are using for the server which in my case is 777 and when you click on enter if you don't have any service running you should end up with something like this that tells you that your status is online and it will give you and your account name and it will tell you where you can find your public post so now these urls down here forwards to my local host which means anyone can use them step 4 after creating your own api make an interface with Arduino. so here is our obstacle avoidance robot with our own api thank you